Welcome, listeners. Welcome to uh, Research Nutritionals Protocols in Action podcast. I'm Dennis Schoen, and I'm the founder of Research Nutritionals. The goal of the Protocols in Action podcast are to provide practitioners actionable protocols and or product ideas that will assist them improve patient health. Research Nutritionals is known as the company that conducts clinical research at leading universities and research institutes with the results published in peer-reviewed journals. Our product formulation models include multiple mechanisms of action to address health issue versus a product based on a new fat ingredient because we believe the body is much too complicated for a single ingredient or single mechanism of action to fix the problem. It's my pleasure today to introduce today's guest, Dr. Nushin Darvish, who practices in the Seattle area. Dr. Darvish is an award-winning licensed naturopathic physician. She's the founder and medical director of Holistique and the author of The Golden Gate, Unleash Your Feminine Powers to Graceful Aging. As a clinician of 30 years, Dr. Darvish is an expert in hormone health, women's health, regenerative medicines, chronic complex diseases, and integrative cancer therapies. In her practice, her guiding principles is to harmonize the science of medicine with the art of healing. Dr. Darvish's life purpose is to transform lives from within, support women's health and well-being, and serve through educating and healing the mind, body, and soul. She strives to practice a perfect blend of the art of science and medicine, treating the root cause, or I should say causes, of chronic conditions. Outside of her practice, Dr. Darvish serves on the board of directors of the Mona Foundation, and she enjoys spending time with her three daughters and loves to travel. Dr. Darvish earned her doctorate in naturopathic medicine from Bastyr University. She completed a two-year residency in naturopathic family medicine and two postgraduate fellowships in integrative cancer therapies and in metabolic and nutritional medicine. She is board certified as a diplomate in anti-aging medicine. She also holds an affiliate faculty position with Bastyr University. I have known Dr. Darvish for many years, and it's been a pleasure to know her all these years, and have been fortunate enough to enjoy sharing dinner with Dr. Darvish and her family at their Seattle area home. Welcome, Nushin. It's so nice to have you in Protocols in Action. Thank you so much, Dennis. It's such an honor to be here with you and uh, to reconnect after all these years. So it's, yes. I'm so yes, grateful. Thank too you. Too long. I need to get back up to Seattle. Yes, you do. <laughs> My experience in working with doctors such as yourself is most have a really deep personal connection that drives them in, into this field. And it might be helpful for our listeners if you provide just some of your background and, and your journey to getting to become a naturopathic physician along with all of your extensive postgraduate training as well. Well, like I think a lot of doctors have had similar stories in that um, I was sick all the time as a child and full of amalgams by the age of 11, uh, on antibiotics every few months as a child, and um, was not well until I met a naturopathic doctor who moved into North Vancouver. I grew up in Canada. And so it was there that um, he introduced me to naturopathic medicine at the age of 15, 16, and after a few treatments and sessions with them, I got a lot better. And then um, I was also diagnosed, by the way, with rheumatoid arthritis at the age of 19. Oh, wow. And I recognized that that was in relationship to some of the foods I was eating and not really addressing the stressors in my life. And so once I entered Bastyr and started working on that, that transformed. I've never been on any kind of medications, I never have any kind of pain or deformity in my hands or anywhere. Um, and it's very interesting, but later on, after I finished my residency, I found out that my grandmother, my great grandmother, Bibi, she was a holistic physician and well known of her time in the 1940s. Wow. 
And I just feel that she continues to guide me through this process of even leading me into this field and continuing to, after 30 years, still loving what I do. So, so I attribute a lot of it to her for the work that she, has, she did and has done um, to help me through this process from a spiritual, energetic perspective. And just imagine if she were here to see you today, right? Yeah, well, she's here. To, she's here with you, so, oh, wonderful. Holy, well, that's... no, I mean, you know, energetically, spiritually, oh, okay. yeah, I feel like a... she's, yeah, she's in my heart. She's here. I think, I think that's what happens. I think uh, yeah. our, our parents and grandparents and all live through us, you know, and they're always in our heart. So that's, that's, that's very right. exciting, though, how, how great for you. And, and uh, she's probably very proud that you published your new book also. Yes, yes, and I think she guided me through that process as well. As so why don't you tell us, you know, regarding your new book, I mean, why don't you go through some of the key tenets of your book and, and sort of what prompted you to author this, because I know it's quite a process to go through. Well, it's called The Golden Gate. Unleash Your Feminine Powers to Graceful Aging, A Guide to Living Longer and Healthier with Joy. So I started writing this book around 11 years ago when my mother was diagnosed with a very aggressive form of uterine and ovarian cancer. She was really in stage four, but they initially told her she was stage three. And she refused all conventional therapies. And she was raised by Bibi, my, grand, my great-grandmother. And so she was really adamant in living with the teachings that her BB had taught her, which was really holistic medicine. And so she refused all Western conventional medicine therapies, and um, they had told her she'll survive maybe a year with chemo and radiation, and less if she refused it. So she decided, I'm going to refuse it. And so she did. And she thrived for about nine years until the pandemic hit and my father actually um, suddenly passed away. And after he passed away, she chose to recognize that it was also her time. She didn't want to live anymore. And so she passed away very shortly after that. And it was a few months later that I was, um, I was reached out or somebody, a publisher and an editor reached out to me and asked me if I had a project for them. And I thought, huh, maybe this is a message that it's time for this book to come out. And so, so I started working on it with the editor and the publisher, and here it is. And it was just published last month. So The Golden Gate really is, thank you, is really a term that my mother created by the fact that, well, it's, it's a long story, but I don't want to get into that necessarily right now, but uh, unless you want me to. <laughs> I think whoever reads it will see that story. But in any case, the Golden Gate really means um, that women have the capacity and the power to transform our own lives. And there is a golden gate, not only in women, but also in men, because men have that feminine energy within them. And so if we can balance out the masculine and the feminine energies within ourselves, you know, the masculine and feminine hormones, the energy around us, the uh, qualities and attributes that we exemplify, for instance, kindness and compassion tend to be regarded, intuition tend to be more associated with feminine qualities. And, um, and so if we can bring those up a little bit to match the masculine qualities in this world, we'll have a very different world. We'll have so much more health within our bodies. We know that when testosterone drops, we are not as confident, we're not as grounded, we're not as healthy as we could be, but also as estrogen drops. We are also not as healthy, and uh, our cellular system is not as optimized as it could be. So this balance of masculine and feminine energies at all levels, physical, mental, emotional, cellular, need to come into balance for each one of us individually and collectively to create well-being. 
So the Golden Gate is, is that power within us to capture that balance, really. So it's really a book that's really targeted at all people, it yes. seems. Uh, because everybody, it sounds like, could really benefit by the principles that you've included in your book. Yes. Although I would say that initially it's geared towards women, mainly, um, just because I come from a very strong lineage of women. <laughs> and so I thought that's where I would start. <laughs> but really the principles are good for both men and women at all levels. Well, that's, that's wonderful. See, when I was looking through the book, one of the, um, I, I, I know it's a tenet or, you know, phrases you use is the word kosh. Uh-huh. Why don't you explain to, to listeners what that is? I think that's very interesting. So kosh, chosh, means uh, kosh? joy. Yeah, joy. chosh. Kosh. Chosh means joy. And my mother would always say choshbosh. Choshbosh means be joyful. Don't let the fetters of this earthly life bring you down, weigh you down, and make you sick, make you stressed. And it's not, it's not worth it. So choshbosh. So I didn't realize how powerful that term was until she passed away. And as I was writing this book and I realized, my gosh, she would always tell me, Hoshbosh, it's not worth carrying this stress, this baggage that we are constantly consumed with in this world. It's so temporary and uh, it will pass. Uh, right? We are destined for something more elevated. We're destined for more joy than to be bar burdened with this, the, the fetters of this world. Yeah, what a wonderful philosophy. What a positive philosophy. Yes, That's fantastic. Yes. And then so, I realized, you know, Hush, being joyful, has such a powerful, um, it's such a powerful state to be in because there is now studies coming out as to how being positive, being optimistic, being joyful can actually shift our mitochondria, can create better outcomes in our health in our well-being, can increase, uh, can increase our longevity. So hush is, is really powerful and something that I try to keep in mind, hush bosh. I'm always trying to be hush. <laughs> I like that. I love the idea behind that. And, and just the idea that you know, our bodies are so much more than the physical being. And you know, it, it makes me think back that many years ago, um, when I was first getting into the nutritional supplement industry and the company I was working with, you know, we had these B vitamins we were putting out and we wanted to mention something about the impact of stress on the body, but our internal regulators, you know, who looking at the claims and everything said, no, you can't do that because the FDA does not believe that, phys that um, the psychological stress has any impact on the physical aspects of the body. And I mean, all of us are just sort of like amazed at it, but that's sort of what you're saying is, and we all know now, right? We all know that what stress does to the body and, you know, you know whether it's, you know, increasing inflammation, you know, all sorts of issues that are taking place in there. So I think that's a, a great philosophy to live by. Good for you. Yeah, you know, it's bi-directional. So on the one hand, if we are thinking more optimistically and thinking and choosing to be optimism, optimistic is actually a choice. It's a conscious choice that we make. There is now studies showing that being hopeful, being joyful is a prefrontal cortex decision-making process. So we can use our prefrontal cortex to make a decision that we are gonna be optimistic, more joyful, or we can go the other way and be more negative. And, and being joyful, yes, it impacts the cells but our cells, the healthier they are, also obviously impact our mindset and well-being. We know that from the, the studies on the microbiome and the gut and all of that connection, the interconnection between the, the brain and the gut connection and, and, and that the brain itself also has its own microbiome. And, and all of these things are so integrated, they impact us so immensely at the physical, mental, and emotional, and spiritual levels that we can't deny it anymore. There's so many studies coming out. 
It's very, very exciting to be in this field right now. Well, I think you're right, and I think the whole idea of the bi-directional um, aspect of the body, too, between the brain and the gut. I mean, it, it makes sense. It's not a one-way street. Our, our bodies are, are, are made to, to listen to what's going on within the body and, and give the signals, you know, from the brain elsewhere, but also from the gut to the brain. And we continue to, to move more in that area. You, you talk about, I think, also something like reduced to calm. Yes. Why don't you let's talk yes. about that a little more. Explain that, please. So I created this, uh, this method. I call it the Kosh method, the Hosh method, right? How to be joyful, because it is a process. We cannot become joyful if physically we are sick. And so we do need to pay attention to the physical, this temple of the soul, right? And so I created this... Um, the system, I call it the Hosh method, okay? And it's a six step process. And it's something that I have been using with my patients for at least 20 years, if not 25 years. But it starts with recognizing that we need to reduce to calm. We need to reduce the inflammation. We need to reduce exposure. We need to reduce exposure to our toxins. And um, that's the very, very first step, which we'll get a little bit more into with, with what we have to discuss with some of the products that Research Nutritional supports in that level. But then the other systems, the other steps include replenish, so replenishing to nourish, and releasing to relieve is number three, so that has to do more with detox. Restoring to heal, once your cup is emptied and you've detoxed and eliminated these toxins, it's now time to fill that bucket up, that cup up with good stuff, right? And then number five step is regenerate to create. And regenerating to create means that we now have, once we've eliminated these toxins and reduced the inflammation and replenished our system, we now are ready to regenerate our cells, our well-being, our, the way we are being in this world at many levels, right? We, I find that once some of my patients at this level start new professions or they start new relationships and, um, and their cells start regenerating. So they actually start looking and feeling much more vibrant and younger. And then the sixth step is relating to elevate, which is really what we're doing, Dennis, right now, is we're creating community and we're giving away the joy that we have created within ourselves. It's time to give it away like a boomerang. You send it out and it comes back to you tenfold. So you become more joyful, right? Relating to others, creating community, being of service, sending love, that's all part of creating more joy, it activates all that oxytocin to create more joy. But it starts with reducing to calm. It starts with eliminating exposures and reducing that inflammation. You know, it's so interesting. There's so much research out and has been out for a number of years now on the impact of inflammation in the body. And I think you're right, anything we can do to control it makes a lot of sense because we know that that inflammation it impacts us in many ways. I mean, obviously, from you know, from a pain standpoint, but it also impacts the mitochondria, and the the mitochondria, the membranes around the mitochondria get damaged. And if you're trying to create energy in in the body, if the membranes are damaged, you could probably give somebody a ton of CoQ10, and it won't make any difference. We need to look at how do we repair the damage from from that inflammation, that cytokine activity. And, and because and the importance of that is because electron transport chains are located within the membranes, and that's where energy is actually created. So the membranes aren't functioning properly, then you're going to have a lot hard time producing the energy that you need. And so I, 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 it's just interesting how all this comes together. I mean, we developed the ATP 360 product really for that that whole idea of making the membranes work better. Um, so we can get the body to do what it's supposed to be doing, which is produce energy better. And, and at the same time, 
um, manage cytokine activity and it would be able to reduce that. It's, it, it's interesting what you're talking about. Absolutely, absolutely. We can't heal that mitochondria, those, that cell membrane, if it's constantly bombarded with toxins, right? Like you think about just the simple, basic concept of leaky gut. Leaky gut is a membrane. And that membrane, if we're constantly bombarding it with foods that we are reactive to, or it's toxic to us, glyphosate, or medications, or stress hormones, whatever have you, that that leaky gut, it's, it's gonna be an ongoing process trying to just fix that leaky gut, right? But right. if we remove those foods for just a few weeks, if we remove the toxic exposure, and if we start doing things like meditation and um, prayer and uh, stress management, yoga, exercise, whatever it takes to calm that brain and the stress response down, taking some ashwagandha, whatever it is, to calm that stress down, then we get a chance to heal that gut membrane, that gut lining, and then you can introduce these other nutrients that the gut will now utilize to restore itself, right? right? And it's the same with the mitochondria. We can't keep bombarding it with stress and toxins and, and think that we're gonna heal it if we don't remove the exposures first. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, the body's complicated. And that's what I think is always very interesting is, you know, for us to think a single ingredient or, you know, a single mechanism of action is going to correct it. Um, it's a combination of what's going on physically in the body, what's going on emotionally or mentally in the body, the impact that either of those have on the other. Um, that's right. But, yeah, we have to look at the whole picture. So exactly. we have to realize you know, the, the body requires a lot um, to, to maintain and to, to thrive. And That's I think right. what you're talking about is going from more of a subsistence type of living to really thriving in this environment and enjoying life and being healthy and, and offering a lot to those around you as well. Exactly, exactly. Good. The mitochondria is really a powerhouse, right? Yep. It is a powerhouse and it's impacted by so many different factors. And one of the major factors that it's influenced by is estrogen. And so we're now finding that when estrogen levels drop, the mitochondrial function drops. This can occur mostly in, in women and during menopause or perimenopause, but it also does to some extent occur to, in men. See, if men were given absolutely no estrogen, they would not thrive either. So men need some estrogen. We don't need, you know, you don't need excessive amounts of estrogen, but you do need some estrogen. And women definitely need their estrogen. And when it depletes, the mitochondria is depleted. And what's so fascinating is that when estrogen levels actually um, decrease, the oxidative stress in the body in the mitochondria increases. There is this um, relationship th that happens in the mitochondria as a result of these hormones. And so when we age, right, and part of, part of what we're talking about is aging because it's a natural phenomena as a result of some of these oxidative stressors increasing because hormones are depleting, because the mitochondria naturally becomes dysfunctional as we grow older, and, and because cells go into senescence. And there's so many different factors involved with aging, but if we just focus in on the mitochondria and look at the hormonal changes and the oxidative stress that goes up in the mitochondria, and if we can correct that, then we are actually slowing down the aging process to some extent. Well, I think, I think that's, that's absolutely right. And we also know that oxidative stress increases inflammation, and it's like a vicious circle. Inflammation increases oxidative stress. That's and, right. and so all of this damages a number of areas in the body, but it certainly damages the mitochondria. Yes. And so any way we can control that through the number of things that you mentioned or, you know, you know through proper supplementation, 
um, I, I think it, it certainly helps. I think that's really a key to it. it. It's interesting when we developed the ATP 360 in earlier versions of mitochondrial products, we didn't have something that went after the cytokines. But realizing how important that is in, in the, within the mitochondria, um, the ATP 360 addresses that and actually showed you know, nearly 20% reduction in TNF alpha um, with, with patients on it. So I think, again, the body's complicated, but from a supplement standpoint, if we can attack from different directions, we can do what we can from a physical standpoint. Absolutely. So if that mitochondria is damaged because of all of these natural processes in the body, and we're not even getting to chronic disease and, right. and <laughs> <laughs> cancer, right? We're just yep. talking about the aging process. <laughs> uh, so if the mitochondria is getting damaged, as oxidative stress goes up, inflammation goes up, cells go into senescence, the mi microbiome gets disrupted as a result of all of this, and the list goes on. If we can interfere, intervene, and help the mitochondria reestablish itself through some of these nutrients, right? Curcumin, by the way, is one of my favorite nutrients. And you use it in a number of your products. Right. And um, <clears throat> and I love that because it is truly not just an anti-inflammatory, but I see it as an anti-aging product or a supplement nutrients. It's it reduces the inflammation, yes, but it also helps reduce oxidative stress, which yep. is so important when it comes to aging and longevity and chronic disease and the mitochondria health. It also supports the brain health. Yep. So we're looking at all of these nutrients that you have so um, exclusively and intricately introduced to these different products that are really, I see them as anti-aging. I know people use them for chronic disease. I treat a lot of chronic disease, complex diseases, um, Lyme disease, mold illness, cancer patients. I mean, that's where I started off with doing 25 years ago, but now I'm focusing more on anti-aging and aging and longevity because that's even more of a root of the problem, right? If our cells are, are degenerating in the first place and aging, then we're gonna be more susceptible to chronic disease, more susceptible to cancer. So how can we get the cells, the mitochondria, the nervous system, the brain, the gut, everything to heal in order for us to age slower and to prevent long-term chronic disease. Well, I think it's, it's interesting what you say. Um, w when we look at, at products, it, a lot of ingredients or products that really help those with chronic, chronic ailments also are really helpful just from a purely health, healthy aging standpoint. And then if you go to the other extreme, where you go to extreme athletes, um, what are they doing to their bodies? I mean, they're obviously in great physical shape, but they're also damaging their bodies because of the incredible amount of exercise they're doing, the oxidative stress that they're creating, and the inflammation they're creating in the bodies. They need a lot of the same. So it, exactly. it's, it's one body you know, at different, you know, different times or different levels, but we all need the, the same, you know, same type of support. Exactly, and some need it more than others depending on where we're at, you know, my daughters are right now training for marathons, second marathon, each one of them, and I know their body's going through a lot of oxidative stress, yep. and they need that mitochondria support to reduce the aging stress on their cells. Right? Well, so also, that I, oh, go ahead. No, so, so that at the age, you know, in their 20s, they're not aging like a 40-year-old. Right, right. Right. So they need that support, and that's why I love some of these products like the ATP 360 and the Tri Fortify, the glutathione. I don't think we give glutathione enough of a benefit of what it actually is and does in the body. Well, it, you know, it's interesting from an oxidative stress standpoint, like on our Tri Fortify, um, what we found on that was it reduced oxidative stress by 25% in just two weeks with patients taking it. I mean, and that's essential, again, if you look at what's going on in the body, again, healthy, unhealthy, 
healthy aging or you know you're like your daughter's training for for the marathon um, anything we can do to reduce oxidative stress makes a lot of sense and you know it's peer-reviewed published research showing what it can do and i i think glutathione is it's funny because doctors will ask me you know what do i take and i said well i'm like one person i mean not everybody's body is exactly the same um, but i think there are certain things that are useful for for most people and I think like the ATP 360 for mitochondrial function, I think the Trifortify for you know, the oxidative stress benefit and, and you know, ability actually to increase natural killer cell function at the same time to get the oxidative stress benefit. And, um, and also you know, the proven absorption into the cell. But I, I, I think you're right. We, we need to look at all of this together. Yeah, glutathione also I see this as an anti-inflammatory. So there is research showing that it is an anti-inflammatory and it supports the liver. And that's super important, especially in our modern day US North American based lifestyle and diet that so many people are coming down with non-alcoholic um, liver disease, right? right? And a fatty liver and yep. metabolic syndrome. And we forget that these nutrients are so vital, especially glutathione in, in reducing NASH and supporting liver function and stimulating metabolism. Liver, glutathione does all that, and yet we just mainly see it as an antioxidant, and it's more than that. Oh, it's yeah. truly an, an anti-aging nutrient. Yep. And so that's why I love using glutathione along with ATP 360, because the whole gamut, the whole system requires all of that, both the, the nutri nutrients that are in the ATP 360 for the mitochondria specifically, but also the glutathione. And we didn't talk about Cytoquel. So that's, that's the right. other one that I really like. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's a, right? it's, yeah, that was the product, another one with peer reviewed published research on it. Um, and that one really was designed specifically to go after the cytokine function and really to promote a healthy response to it so that the body will will work better and you know some of the you know what it what it came out with interestingly enough um you know was a huge sleep improvement with people on that and the researchers believe that was because we were so successful at calming the central nervous system down that people were able to just sleep better so it you know something you know that that works, but it's fairly simple. Um, can have a big impact on people, and of course, it you know it reduced pain you know significantly, or or you know physical discomfort people are having, um, and then also help with MMP9. I mean, it's it's a, it's an interesting product. So I'm going to add a few more things to it that you may not realize, <laughs> Dennis. I know I'm going to learn here, right, Nisha? <laughs> Cytoquel, it's got black tea extract in it, right? Yep. Okay, and it's called resveratrol and curcumin. Yep. Yes. Okay, at least two of those, if not three of those. So green tea extract, black tea extract are actually antihistamine. So they reduce mast cells. And mast cells is often one of the main things that keeps people up, causes insomnia. Yes. And so you've got the anti-inflammatory effects going on, but you've also got the antihistamine effects and the antioxidant effects and the nervine effects of all of those nutrients in there that help people go to sleep. So it's, again, reducing to calm. Right. 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 So if we can reduce the um, histamine response, then we're going to be reducing to calm. Yes. Right. And people yes. will calm down and fall asleep. So mast yes. cells and Cytoquel really go hand in hand as well. I know a lot of people use your product Histoquel, and I use Histoquel um, quite a bit as well because it was meant to help with histamine. Right. But I also like Cytoquel as an antihistamine. Yeah, well, I, I, thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, again, there's... <laughs> <laughs> I'm bringing you joy, Dennis. You are. You're bringing me bringing joy. Bringing you joy. You're anti-aging as we speak. <laughs> we're reversing our, our aging process right now as we're talking, right? We are. It's true. Laughter is good medicine. It's anti-aging. Oh. So, yes. Oh, my gosh. I believe in that. I believe in that 
I mean, all the time, but even you know, at work, too. Um, I, I think people need to laugh. I think that laughter does so much for people, you know, beyond just make them happy because they're laughing, but because the, our bodies were made for that. Yes, and, I, yeah. I talk about laughter as being a good medicine in, in here, about how it actually behaves like exercise, has the same impact on a physiology as exercise does. Interesting. And if you talk about, if you think about it, it increases circulation. It right. activates muscles. So it actually builds muscle. It increases oxygenation. It's nervine. It's, it activates the parasympathetic nervous system. I mean, it does so much. And what's so interesting is that just smiling, so even if you're not happy and you just smile, you know, you fake it until you make it. <laughs> <laughs> but that smile will turn into genuine joy, right? It will turn into genuine laughter at some point. See, I'm just, you just fake smiling and then you start laughing. I mean, that's the way it works. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Well, I, again, I mean, it's, it's all part of it, right? Our bodies are very complicated and all aspects come into play. And so, yes. yeah, thank you for bringing up the, the need for laughter and that we should all make sure that we have this in our daily lives. Yeah, it makes us more hush. <laughs> That's right. I like that. I'm going to use that term. I like that, more hush. <laughs> yeah, hush, hush bash. Oh, that, that's fantastic. And, you know, you were also saying, I guess, in that release to relieve part of what, what you know, in, in the book, I mean, that's where we need to, to detox. And obviously, you know, glutathione obviously is detox. It's interesting. People ask me, where did the name trifortify came come from? And the tri, I mean, people think about, you know, it's the three amino acids. Mm -hmm. That's not where it came from. It came from three main areas that it helps, which, you know, is you know, detox, oxidative stress, um, and and immune function. Um, and so I didn't know that. No, I know. People think it's a you know, it's, it's the yeah, you know, I thought it was the amino acids. Yep. Too. Yeah. Now, now that, that's really where it came from, because I think, you know, let's look at it from a, you know, from a benefit standpoint. How do people, how do people's bodies, you know, react to it? And what would be some of the, you know, physiological benefits that would, would certainly hopefully come from something like that? So, yeah, it's, <laughs> it, it's interesting, I mean, where we're going on all this. But I think, you know, you, what you pretty much are saying in your book is that there's so many different aspects to health and that, we, we need to look at all the different aspects. One alone is not going to solve it. Um, and, and I like how you're sort of guiding people through with that. Yeah, it's a step-by-step -step process, right? You, it's kind of a, a layering process. You, right. can't, you can't get your car to go 100 miles an hour until you put the car into, from stop into a gear and then in the second gear and so forth until you get to that 100 miles, right? Or you right. can't make it stop and reverse the aging process if you're going 100 miles an hour the wrong way and you need to turn around or stop and reverse. You have to come to a stop and then put it in reverse. Right. And then turn and then make a different path and go 100 miles an hour again, right? So it's the same with our body. We have to go through these steps. We can't go from being sick into regenerating cells unless we go through these six steps. And, and ultimately, the goal is to regenerate, to slow down our aging, and to live vibrantly with joy. Right. So, so part of that, and I focus quite a bit in my practice on elimination and detoxification, and not the typical detox that we think of, oh, let's do a liver detox. What I'm talking about is actually very specific, detoxifying chemicals, detoxifying infections. As we kill things off, we need to eliminate them, right? And, and one of the examples I use for like, for instance, for chronic Epstein-Barr with my patients is that chronic Epstein-Barr virus, it's like having a glass of water right and um, imagine this this was a dark glass like a water bottle where you can't see that there is any water well if it's just sitting there you come to pick it up 
and then you realize, oh, it's empty. Well, these viruses leave behind casings, right? They shed. And so even if the DNA or the RNA of that virus is eliminated, but the casing is left behind, it's going to still activate the immune system, the cytokine response, right? Right, right. Because the casing is what's triggering the immune response. So if we can teach the body to eliminate that toxin, then you are making room for balance and homeostasis in your body and less inflammation, less cytokine response. Right. So the key is to how do we eliminate this? Because I also find that, you know, these things come in, your body's always trying to create homeostasis. So if you have an infection, which is more negatively charged, you're always going to attract a positively charged ion, like heavy metals. Right, right. right? And so just getting rid of the infection without addressing the metals, you're going to come up with another set of symptoms or some of the old symptoms are going to come to the surface. So the, the goal is to treat the metals and the, and the infection simultaneously and, and activate the, the drainage and the detoxification systems in the body. Right. Well, I, I think that's, again, that's a great way of looking at it. And it's interesting like you're saying, it's not just getting rid of the virus, but it's getting really getting rid of all what's left of it, you know, which we may not see as an active virus, but yet it's it's increasing inflammation in the body. It's still damaging the body um, exactly. in ways beyond it, it initially damaged the body. I think that's very, very interesting. Yes. And so using binders, so as we, we detoxify things through the liver, release it, and start doing some drainage work, then we have to get out of the body. And so that's where the binders come into play. Right. Where we want something, some binders to bind this stuff to get it out so that it doesn't recirculate through the interhepatic circulation again. Right. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I mean, we, we, I mean, other folks have binders as well. I mean, we try to, you know, put binders together for specific reasons that we have one, this the toxin pull one, which is really to look at heavy metals and also glyphosate. Um, and we have another one that's really more from mycotoxins, uh, which is the Mycopol product. But, you know, the idea of combining those, with what you're doing with mitochondria or glutathione with detoxification, I think it's, it's more like these combinations are what increase the efficacy. Um, it's a one plus one equals three type of synergistic issue, I think, when, when you're dealing with this, you know, with the body. And, um, and we try to move more in that direction. I mean, we put some of these, um, what we call duos together, and we have like a revitalizing detox duo, which looks at our glutathione or trifortify, um, you know, along with um, toxin pull, I mean, excuse me, um, you know, along you know, with toxin pull, which is really the binder um, going after specific things. So I think, you know, putting things together and practitioners who are doing that, will probably have greater success because, again, they're hitting it from multiple directions and our bodies are complicated and we need to be looking at them in a more sophisticated way, I believe. That's right. That's right. So if you're eliminating things, if you're detoxifying things, if you're reducing oxidative stress, all those byproducts need to be bound and removed off, out of the body. Otherwise, they recirculate and cause more inflammation and more oxidative stress. Right. right. And, so, and sometimes you just need the binders to do the work without doing too much um, of detox or uh, drainage work or antimicrobial work. You first need to kind of empty your bucket. And that's actually the second step in, in my protocol is, is to um, reduce not only to reduce, but also to restore the replenish. I call it the replenish. Um, to restore and replenish what nutrients you've been missing. Right. right? So you right. have to make sure you have the nutrients in place before you activate the detoxification or the antimicrobial or the heavy metal detox removal systems 
So before you go into that third step of releasing, to relieve, releasing these toxins, we want to make sure you have reduced the inflammation and replenished your body with the nutrients it needs to be able to do that process of detox and and pulling out. So in that second step is where I sometimes will use binders so that the binders are actually pulling out these excessive toxins before I dump stuff further into the system. I think about it, you know, I talk to the patients about how you walk into this room and it's flooded. Now, we can keep on cleaning up the flood or we can clean up the flood and also address the root causes, which is where the leaks are coming from, right? Yep. So sometimes you can't even walk into a room that has a lot of water in it. So you kind of have to empty that a little bit, <laughs> right? Well, it, it, I, it, and that's where the, where, the, where the binders come. Right. It's trying to empty that room from the water a little bit somehow before we address the leaks completely. You know, it's interesting as we practitioners often say, well, you know, what order should we give things? And what we often say is you, especially with, with patients who, you know, have many issues or have had issues for, for quite a long time, um, we, we need to make sure that we open up detox pathways, um, which is what I think you're saying, before we go after that problem, after those leaks. Um, because if we go after the leaks before we open up detox pathways um, and also lower cytokine activity, um, because the research shows that higher cytokine activity, you know, higher Herxheimer response. So we need to open up detox pathways, we need to reduce cytokine activity before we start going after the specific issues that, that might be causing all of this. Exactly, exactly. And we need to bind some of those things. Yes. Clean, yep. you know, empty the bucket a little bit with just binding before we open up a whole can of worms. Right, right. Right. It's the same thing I, I talk about um, neural therapy. I don't know if you know what neural therapy is. Well, please go ahead and share. Yeah, it's a form of injection technique, which is becoming more and more popular. Um, we've been using it for at least 20 years. And I got trained actually by a doctor in Germany, Dr. Kessler. Um, 25 years ago and then um, anyhow so it's addressing the scar tissue because scars tend to bind and attract a lot of toxins heavy metals chemicals hormones just toxins get loaded up around heavy metal uh, around scar tissue so if we just go in there and start doing neural therapy to break up the scar tissue, what we're doing is we're releasing all of this gunk, all of this toxins that have been collected around the scar tissue. That's a very technical term, by the way, gunk. <laughs> <laughs> Patients relate to that, right? <laughs> Any case. We're releasing a lot of these toxins, and if the body's already overloaded with the toxins, it just can't handle it, and people become more sick. So right. what we need to do is actually empty the bucket a little bit, bind some toxins out first, empty out the surroundings so that, and, and put in the nutrient support that the body needs to be able to handle the next layer of toxic load. So when those toxins, including microbes, yeast, and bacteria, and spirochetes, and so forth, are collected around the scar tissue, as we break up that scar tissue and these toxins get released, the body can help itself. It has the building blocks to support its detoxification, drainage, and binding of it to eliminate it directly out of the body versus having it recirculate through the system. Wow. So I usually load up the person with these nutrients and make sure that their inflammation is lower before I start doing neural therapy techniques. Right, right. Wow. Well, that's wonderful. Well, I know we're pretty much nearing the end of our time here, but I want to thank you so much for taking time to share your wisdom and your insight with, with all of our listeners, Nushin. That's really wonderful of you. Thank you so much. You know, I, I love doing these kind of things. It's a service 
that I do to the community. I love educating people and uh, helping people rethink the way they're thinking some protocols or some ways of being. And if I can just bring a little bit of hush into their lives, <laughs> I am doing my job in transforming lives from within. Well, you've brought hush into, uh, into all our lives today. So again, thank you very much and uh, have a wonderful day up there. Thank you so much. Good to talk right. to you, Dennis. Great talk with you as always. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.